Hey guys, it's Finn, and welcome back to another video on the Finn's Graphics channel. Today, I'm going to be showing you exactly how to make a 3D Minecraft resource pack. Now, I've wanted to make this video for a really long time, ever since I made the Infinite Pack, and I had to learn how to create 3D models by myself, I've been really wanting to create a conclusive tutorial for YouTube. So that's what we're going to do today. First up, I want to let you guys know I'm going to be using Windows for this tutorial. Uh, it will also work on Mac or Linux, uh, but I feel like the majority of you guys use Windows. So that's what I'm going to be using for this tutorial. Uh, I'm also going to be using a software called Opal's Model Creator. And that is the most simple uh, and clean, sleek way of creating models that is cross-platform. So no matter what you're using, this is going to work. And uh, it's just a really good way to learn it to start. Uh, also, I'm going to be using a Windows computer. Uh, I was sent this HP NVX 360 uh, from AMD and it's a really awesome laptop so huge shout out to them for sending me this computer and collaborating with me to make this video. It almost goes without saying that you need a good computer in order to not only create 3D models but also run them in game as 3D models are quite a bit more intensive uh, than just your normal Minecraft resource pack. So again, thank you so much to AMD for sponsoring the video, and uh, let's get straight into it. So first up, I want to explain a little bit about how 3D models work. So we're in Minecraft right now, and as you can see, we have a few 3D models I've created laid out here. Uh, these are from the Infinite Pack. So as you can see here, this bookshelf actually has some dimension to the books. Uh, we've got a small indent on this crafting table. Little things like that, uh, that sort of just add some cool detail uh, to Minecraft. Now, really, you can do whatever you want with 3D models. You can do some really crazy and extensive things. So to get started creating one of these 3D models, you're going to want to start off by going to your resource pack folder. The easiest way to do this is to go into the escape menu, go to options, resource packs, and click open resource pack folder. As you can see here, it's brought me to app data roaming dot Minecraft resource packs. Now, the easiest way to learn is by using the default resource pack as a guide. Now, to get the default resource pack, you can either download online or just go to your versions file, find the version of Minecraft you're using, extract that Java file and find the assets folder that's going to have all of the default resource pack files. We're going to start out by opening that up, going to the assets folder minecraft and then going to models this is where all the models are stored for both the blocks and the items we're going to start off by going into blocks and we're going to open up one of these json files for this tutorial we're going to be making a 3d ladder so double click on the ladder.json file and then choose more apps and open it with notepad you can use any text editor but if you use the default notepad uh, as you can see the text isn't really formatted very nice and you have to scroll all the way to the end uh, which can get quite annoying so yeah i'm using notepad plus plus uh, but you can use any text editor you want so now that we have this open i want to quickly go over what each of the elements of of this file are and then I'll show you how to create one of your own so first up we have ambient occlusion uh, and it's set to false right now I find that false usually looks the best uh, basically ambient occlusion is a lighting setting in Minecraft so if we turn this on and off then it will either apply it to your model or remove it from your model next we have the textures section and this is what points to the different files in your texture pack folder uh, to let the model know what it's going to be using so as you can see for the particles it's pointing to a block slash ladder as this is the ladder model uh, and then for the texture itself as well it's also pointing to a block slash ladder now the cool thing is you can point to whatever texture you want wherever you want uh, and even create your own so you don't have to call it ladder you can call it uh, the ladder side piece if you want uh, and it will still work as long as you point it to the right location and then after that is the elements and this basically explains everything else uh, such as how large the model is whether it's shaded what faces it's all pretty confusing and it would be a lot of work to create a model manually using this so what we're going to be doing like I mentioned earlier is using a software called Opal's model creator now of course there'll be a link in the description of this video to download Opal's model creator so after you downloaded Opal's model creator open up the folder and you'll see a bunch of different files scroll down to the very bottom and open the model creator file now this is a Java file so you're going to need Java in order to run it uh, but if you have Minecraft chances are you already have Java so that's gonna open this window here and this is your main model creator uh, but you're going to want to click on view right off the bat and then dialogues and open up all of the other windows such as the texture manager the uv editor and the face data settings so to start off let's actually open the existing ladder model by going file and then open 
uh, don't save current model, go into resource packs, default resource pack, assets, Minecraft, and then go down to models, block, and then find the ladder.json. All right, so now you can see we have our little ladder in the bottom right hand corner here. Uh, and you can use the scroll wheel to zoom in and then use right click to sort of navigate around right click and hold and then you can sort of move the model around like this and uh, this is how you're going to view the model while you're creating it and as you can see right now it is merely a texture there's no three dimensions to it at all the basics of it are your face data settings determine uh what is shown on each side of your model so if i click on the main side of this model right here you can see the face data settings show that i'm using the only texture that we have and there's no call face um the tech there's no texture rotation and it's not flipped at all and then it shows here the texture itself and here you can actually select how much of the texture you're showing on your model so if i start dragging this around as you can see if we want to we can only show let's say these four pixels in the bottom if that's all we select and then as you can see all we have is a giant four pixels right there uh, so it's pretty simple and pretty intuitive uh, most of the time you're going to want your entire texture on just like this next is the more complicated part the texture manager and what this is for is adding in multiple textures so to start off you can see we have the name texture the minecraft path which is blocks slash ladder you're not going to ever want to put your full path in here you're always going to want to start out with blocks or items you're not going to want to put your full file path in here ever or add dot png to the end or anything merely the folder it's in and then the file name excluding the extension for example if your file was in blocks and it was called file dot png you want to put it in like this without the dot png because if you put that there minecraft's not going to recognize it so let's start out by adding our own texture i think i'm going to want to add some wood texture to this ladder uh so we're going to make a new file and we're going to name it uh you know wood side you can name whatever you want i'm going to do wood side because i'm probably going to use it for the side of the model uh the minecraft path we're going to do blocks slash planks underscore oak so that it'll find the oak plank texture and then so we can actually see that texture in the software itself we're going to click on this little c and it's going to actually find that texture in our minecraft folder now if clicking that c doesn't work it probably means you entered in the file name incorrectly or you just have to browse your computer to find it yourself but now that we have that texture added in there let's create a new shape so click on edit and click new element uh, you can also just click n on your keyboard if you want to and this is going to create a huge new shape now each of these little sections is a side so this is left slash west this is top slash up and this is front slash south so if I start dragging it around, you'll see how that affects all the different sides. So if I drag it down, as you'll see, it affects the uh, you know front or the south side. And if I drag it sideways, you can see it affects the top slash up. Uh, so basically, it's sort of like an easy way to edit all the different sides. Um, so let's say we wanted to make uh, a little bit of a pillar. We could make it just like this and go like that. And uh, as you can see here, it's a really wide pillar. If you can see that sort of square. Uh, so we want to go in here and then make it a little bit thinner, just like so. We're just clicking and dragging on the points. And we can move it around just like that and now you can see we've got a pretty cool pillar going right there now the only issue with our pillar is that it is invisible uh, so to fix that we're going to want to click on each side and then click t on our keyboard which is going to make each side visible so click on the side and then click t select the side and then click t select the other side click t you want to do this for every side of your object to make all sides visible and there you go we already have the start of our ladder next we want to start texturing it so just click on a side and then go over to the face data settings like you mentioned earlier and then select your texture uh, we can select the main texture which is called texture we can select the particle texture we want to choose wood side and this is going to choose our oak plank texture that we set up just a second ago now as you can see in the uv editor we have quite a few more options now because this is only two pixels wide it's automatically only selected two pixels of the texture which is actually perfect for us uh, so we might want to drag this over to be on the side just over here maybe that's sort of the section we want uh, if you wanted to we could just select one pixel by itself if you wanted the entire thing to be like a solid color perhaps um, but I think we're gonna select the two pixels just like it is on the actual object and uh, you can see that's looking pretty good let's do it for the rest of the sides really quick now you can see we've got a nice post going uh, it looks like it's actually three pixels wide which we don't really want let's make it only two pixels wide just like that and then move it over to where the actual ladder is going to be now at this point i'm probably just going to delete this ladder texture because it's kind of getting in the way so we're going to go to edit and then we're going to go to delete selected elements to get that out of the way and then we're going to move this into position where it was just like so good now let's duplicate it for the other side so go edit and then go copy 
and then go edit and then paste. Obviously, you can use the control C, control V commands for this if you want. Let's go back and move that to the opposite side, just like so. That's looking pretty good. Uh, maybe you want to edit the texture of it a little bit so it's not exactly the same as the other side. Let's move it to this side, maybe right about there. So you get like a little dot on it. That looks pretty nice. Let's start adding some rungs. And uh, the easiest way to do this is to just duplicate the textures again with control C and control V. So we don't have to make new ones. Uh, and then just going to the correct side and then changing the actual shape of it just like so. Uh, so let's actually switch to the main texture of the ladder and then just select one of the rungs just like that. And then we'll move it back onto the bars. Now let's make sure we texture each side so it's consistent. We'll do the bottom as the same texture uh, and then bring it up just like this. And to add a little bit of detail, let's actually only make it the dark side. So as you can see, it'll just stretch the dark side along the bottom just like that. I think it looks a little bit nicer. And then I'd say the back is fine. It can stay as the wood texture. And then let's just go ahead and duplicate this for the rest of the rungs. All right, our model is almost done. Let's just switch up the texture a little bit so there's a little bit of variance just like this. And there we go. All right. I'd say that's a pretty good looking ladder. Now, a few things before we exit out of this software, I want to show you guys some cool things that you can do. One is you can go to view and change the grid size to be a lot smaller. So let's say we change the grid side to be 0 0.25. As soon as you scroll to zoom in on any of these sides, it's going to update and show you a whole bunch of new grid options. So if you want to add some fine detail, uh, you can change the model size ever so slightly. So you can make it really thin if you wanted to. And then lastly, the most important part, saving your model. Just click file and then save. And it will replace the old model, obviously, uh, because we had it open. Or you could save this as a different one if you wanted to. You could save this as, I don't know, uh, pink wool if you wanted. And then every time you place pink wool, it would look like this ladder. Uh, because really all Minecraft is going off of is the file name. Uh, so if you want to make every single block in Minecraft a ladder, you could do that by just saving this model as every file name. You could save this model as stone. You could save this model as a log. You could save this model as dirt, as everything. And then if you went into the game, they would all be ladders. It's basically all based off of the file name that you save it as. So let's hop in Minecraft here and test it. As you can see, we have our default ladder. Looks pretty normal, pretty average. Uh, but let's go escape options, resource packs, and put on the resource pack that we're working on, which is just the default resource pack right now. We'll pop it on, wait for it to load. As you can see, here is our awesome ladder model. Now, it probably could use a little bit of work. I'm not liking how the colors are matching up. So maybe I'll go and modify the textures or create some new textures for it. Again, you can use whatever textures you want. You're not limited to the default Minecraft textures. Um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Obviously, the ladder still works. Uh, it has some awesome 3D elements to it. Uh, you can see right down the middle like that, which is pretty cool. So if we go back into our texture pack folder and open the texture pack, go to assets, go to Minecraft, and then open up models again, go to block, and then find our ladder texture. We can see it now has all of the data that we created with the Opal's model creator. It says created with Opal's model creator. It shows all the textures we added and all of the different elements. Now, what I want to show you in here is some of the options you have after you've created the model. One is you can give the model a parent. All you have to do is add the parent tag and then do block slash log or whatever you called your original log model. And that is going to keep all the attributes of the log model so that this log is going to look just like your original log model, except you can add in some new attributes. For example, if you want this log for some reason to have ambient occlusion, you could add that to true. Or the main thing, you're going to want to change the texture blocks slash jungle underscore log. And that way you're going to keep the exact same model but it's going to replace the textures with the jungle log textures. And then all you have to do is recreate this for each log. And that way you can easily create all of the different varieties of logs without having to recreate the model each time. As you can see here, each of these logs has a different texture, but they all have the same parent model, uh, which gives them this cool sort of rounded shape.
Okay, so you're almost a model master now. There's only one more thing I want to explain, and that is how to change the way items look while you're holding them. As you can see in the infinite pack, I have made these cool sort of 3D swords. You can have like a 3D bow, and when you pull it back, you can see it actually has sort of some, some dimension to it. Um, but the thing is, you have to specifically specify how they show up in your hand, as well as how they show up when you're in F5. If we scroll down to the very bottom, there is a new section called display. Now there's a lot of different options here, uh, but basically you have to play around with it. Make sure you type it out exactly like this. I'll leave example files in the description so you guys can copy and paste. You have to enter in different degrees of rotation, translation, and scale to sort of move the object to exactly where you want it to be. So as you can see here, I have for first person in the right hand, it is slightly rotated, so it's tipped forward a little bit. Uh, the translation is slightly higher, so it's slightly higher in your hand. And the scale is just slightly bigger than one. One is the default scale, like 16 pixels. And then 1.1 is just slightly bigger uh, because I thought the swords need to be a little bit bigger in your hand to be a little bit more realistic. For example, if I change the scale right here to, let's say, four, uh, just to go over the top, let's do the scale of four for every dimension. If we did only one dimension, then it would be stretched. Uh, but let's do all the dimensions just so you can get an idea. We'll do Control S to save and then hop back into Minecraft really quick and then do F3 and T to reload the textures and as you can see the sword is now giant in my hand so all you have to do is just play around with those different numbers to get it to look exactly the way you want it to in your hand now obviously if we go into third person it still looks normal sized uh, because each of those options are different uh, so you want to try and keep it consistent so that when you're in first person it's the same size as in third person so one last thing for troubleshooting if any of your models end up purple and black in Minecraft that means that you made a mistake mistake when you were editing the JSON file. It means you either added the wrong kind of apostrophe, you didn't add a comma when you did a new line, something very small like that. Uh, basically, purple and black just means that you made a mistake, so you have to double check everything and make sure that you did it all correctly. All right, so now that you know how to create 3D models, I want to again talk about computers for a second. Because like I mentioned earlier, you do need a pretty good computer in order to create some of the more advanced 3D models. Uh, so you have to be very wary when creating these 3D models and just know that the more detail you add to the model, uh, the better computer you're going to need to actually view that model. Uh, especially if you're making a pack uh, that you want to release for other people to use. You want to make sure that you don't do too many 3D models uh, because that'll bog down your computer. Now I want to quickly take a second to talk about the computer that I'm using. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm using the HP NVX 360 that I was sent by AMD. Uh, and it has the latest 7th generation AMD APU. Um, so it's a really great option if you're looking for a computer. Now it's not necessarily necessarily a gaming computer, uh, but it's perfect for maybe if you're in school and you want to be able to get your work done faster so that you can play longer uh, because it is a laptop so it's perfect for well in class it also has that 360 ability so you can like flip it around which is kind of cool um, and of course it packs a pun with that AMD processor for a great experience while gaming the computer also has some other neat features like AMD turbo core which is kind of like overclocking it basically just lets you get a little bit of extra performance when you need it it's also great for video and has some pretty cool automatic video enhancing features uh, where you can choose from different picture styles uh, they've got quite a few options and they all look pretty cool now obviously I've been using this computer for Minecraft as well as making this video uh, but I also have been watching some anime on it uh, in my spare time and I was really impressed with the audio quality actually coming out of this laptop uh, the speakers are by Bang and Olsen now I'm not really familiar with that at all but I have to say I was actually pretty impressed uh, and it was really enjoyable just to have this on my lap while watching anime without having to wear any headphones uh, the sound quality was really good but anyway that's pretty much it if you are interested you can follow AMD on Twitter at AMD or if you want to learn more you can click on the link in the description and uh, with that again I want to thank AMD so much for sponsoring the video and I hope you guys learned something if you did or have any questions at all about the tutorial or the computer you can leave them in the comments below and I'll see you all next week. peace